الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known alayhi salatu wa salam for his gentleness with his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was gentle in many of his affairs if not all the affairs alayhi salatu wa salam and what illustrates this most Going back to our dars and fiqh, uh, of basic fiqh, in the Kitab of Tahara, we reach the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this hadith is the hadith of the A'rabi, of a, of a Bedouin, who came and urinated in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with this situation. And imagine, just imagine now how we would deal with it. How would you deal with someone if they, even if they came in with shoes on in the masjid? Or if they had some najasa or something on, or even some foot powder? You can imagine how the people would scream and yell and, and, and behave with them. But, Let's see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with the situation alayhi salatu wa salam. An Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala jaa a'rabiyu fabala fi taifat al-masjid fazajruhu al-nas fanahahum al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam falamma qada bawluhu amara nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi dhunubin min ma فَأَهْرِيكُوا عَلَيْهِ رَوْهُ بُخَارِي وَمُسْلَمْ In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A man came in the masjid and he was a Bedouin man, a man who lived in the countryside or, or, or a man uh, that made their living possibly by goat herding and following the, and, and camels and so forth. And that being a nomad. And he came in the masjid of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This means the masjid in Medina, the Prophet's masjid. He came in the masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he urinated in the masjid, in a portion of the masjid. And then the people began to become very upset with him. They wanted to cause him harm. And the Prophet ﷺ prohibited them. He stopped them. Alayhi salatu was salam. And when he finished urinating, the man, when he finished urinating in the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ ordered them to go get some water and pour it on the area the man urinated in. And this was collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, there are many benefits, but we'll keep it concise. One of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, of course it shows the gentleness and wisdom when correcting a mistake of someone. That's very important and that's something we really need to, to benefit from this hadith, this lesson from the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, to see how to correct people properly. When you see someone making a mistake, especially a new Muslim, or someone who doesn't have very much knowledge, are you harsh with them? Do you jump on them? You see someone, he's got earrings on. Well, perhaps he's a very new Muslim. So you should talk to him with gentleness. Also, start with those things which are more important. Help him in his aqidah, his belief. And this is the example of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
one of the benefits we gain from this hadith is that w the way in which we purify urine or najasa that's on the on the ground is by using water, pouring water on it in order to remove the najasa. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows that we should respect the masjid, the masajid, any place where the, the places of prayer where the people gather together to pray in, that we should respect those places, that those are sacred places, those are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, Inna al masajid lillahi fala tad'u al ma'allahi ahada. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the masajid are the houses of Allah. So do not call or supplicate to anyone besides Allah in those houses or other than those houses. Do not commit shirk. But it lets us know that the masajid are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the places of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed as sacred places. Another benefit that we gain from this hadith is it shows us the the beautiful manners of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that he alayhi salatu wasalam that he showed and gave direction and guidance to this Bedouin with gentleness and kindness, teaching him with gentleness. And this is even after the man had urinated in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in another narration, the man had supplicated for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allahumma arhamni wa muhammadin wa la tarham ma'ana ahada. So the man, after the people had wanted to attack him, for urinating in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu he supplicated to Allah. He said, O oh Allah, have mercy upon me and Muhammad, and don't have mercy upon anyone uh, else besides us. So the Bedouin, because they were known for the kind of their being very straightforward, sometimes being harsh in their mannerisms, but they're very straightforward people. He was very direct in, in supplicating to Allah that he wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he saw the way the other people had, had dealt with him that they wanted to, to remove him from the masjid or stop him from urinating and possibly even harm him that he was moved by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the way the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam the way he dealt with him with gentleness and kindness so that's why he supplicated, he said, Oh Allah, have mercy upon me and Muhammad, and don't have mercy upon anyone else uh, besides us, or with us. And that's in the narration of Bukhari. So it shows the gentleness of the Prophet wasallam, and that we should take from those manners, alayhi salatu wasalam. Another benefit we gave from this hadith is that this hadith illustrates for us a very important fiqh principle, a soul of fiqh principle that the prophets, uh, that the ulama abstract from a hadith and from a ayat in the Quran where in this hadith uh, this qaida or this principle is that to take the akhaf dararain that if there's two things that are harmful for example one and this being two harmful things take the lighter of the two which of course is this one this is lighter than this one so we take the akhaf dararain meaning that they're both harmful things but the sharia shows us and as a sharia principle that we take the lighter of the two we take the lesser of the two evils and in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he would, so the ulama, they say some of the wisdom behind this hadith is that, for example, if the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam had stopped the man from urinating in the masjid, 
that it would have spread urine around the masjid. It would have spread more because the man was urinating. So the Prophet ﷺ stopped the people from stopping him from urinating. He allowed for him to continue until he finished. So if the Prophet ﷺ had tried to stop him or have the people stop him, the man would have, the, the urine would have spread even further around the masjid. And another wisdom is that also, perhaps by the man trying to hold his urine, not only would it have made a bigger mess, but he would have harmed himself. Because if you try, especially if you try to, after, while during urination, you try to stop yourself, this is very harmful for you. And it's very difficult as well. So it shows us that taking the khaf of the rarain in that situation was letting the man continue. Although it's harmful, of course, to urinate in the masjid. That doesn't mean it's permissible to urinate in the masjid. But the Prophet ﷺ, out of his hikmah and his wisdom and his guidance and his prophetic basira and, and knowledge and insight, alayhi salatu wasalam, that he chose the lesser of the two evils. He allowed the man to continue, finish his urination, then he invited him to good. Not that he let him finish and then he attacked him and then he blasted him. No. And this is unfortunately what we find in many people's advice. They call themselves given the siha, but yet they're very harsh and they're very uh, uh, difficult with the people and, and, and stern. May Allah protect us and prevent us from being that way. I mean. Another benefit which we've already mentioned is it shows us the importance of being gentle when teaching those people who have little knowledge. And that's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. And anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa Sallallahu Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi Wasallam.